Here I've got a nice viewer suggested problem that involves the floor function. So let's see what we want to do. We want to find all real numbers x such that the floor of x plus 1 over 27 plus the floor of x plus 2 over 27 plus the floor of x plus 3 over 27 all the way up to the floor of x plus 80 over 27 is equal to 500. Before we jump into this, let's just recall what the floor function does. It's essentially like an elevator down to the first integer. So if you're already at an integer, well, you don't really need to go down to get to an integer. So the floor of 2 is 2. But if you're anywhere below an integer, then you go to the integer that is lower, even if you're very close to, for instance, say 4. So the floor of 3.999 is 3 because we took the elevator down to 3. Okay, so let's maybe get into it. First off, I want to notice that any x value that would satisfy this equation can be placed between two integers. Let's maybe call those integers n and n plus 1. So let's say x is from n to n plus 1, and we're going to use that as a half open interval. But furthermore, we can decompose this interval from n to n plus 1 into a certain number of pieces kind of being inspired by this 1 over 27 action. So notice over here we're at the left endpoint of n and then right to the right of it will be n plus 1 over 27 and then we'll have n plus 2 over 27 and then somewhere in the middle we'll have something kind of arbitrary, which we'll call n plus m over 27, and the next one will be n plus m plus 1 over 27. So essentially, we're splitting up this interval from n to n plus 1 into 27 pieces. And then we want to further say that if x has to be inside of this interval, the n to n plus 1 interval, then it in fact has to be inside of one of these subintervals. And let's call that subinterval this one that I have here in pink, which is n plus m over 27 to the next one. So let's maybe just notate that by putting a closed circle here and an open circle here and saying that the x actually lives somewhere in there. So let's maybe write that a little bit more carefully. So we've got x is in the half open interval n plus m over 27 to n plus m plus 1 over 27. And this is going to be for m from the finite set 0 to 26. So that's pretty clear that we can take the m values from that spot. Now what we'd like to do is take these guys that are forming our sum and split them up into a couple of categories. So let's do that. So our first category will start with x plus 1 over 27, and then we'll also have x plus 2 over 27, all the way up to x plus 26 minus m over 27. You know, why did I stop there? Well, that's because each of these numbers is between n and n plus 1. And that's just by the structure of how we have turned our n to n plus 1 into subintervals. So notice all of these floors are equal to n. Because like I said, they're all strictly between n and n plus 1. Now we can do the same kind of thing for the next several pieces of our sum. So here we're going to have x plus, well, the next one, but that's going to be 27 minus m over 27. And this case is a bit different than our first one because we know that this number in here lies between n plus 1 and n plus 1 plus 1 over 27 just by our structure here. So that means we have a full list of possibilities in this second row. So this is going to be the floor of x plus 28 minus m over 27 all the way up to 
the floor of x plus 53 minus m over 27. And you might say, well, what happens at the next spot? Well, at 54 minus m over 27, you actually get a different value for the floor. So if you look at all of these guys on this list, you'll notice that they're all between n plus 1 and n plus 2, which means when you take their floor, you get n plus 1. Now we're going to play that game again. So we'll have x plus 54 minus m over 27, and then x plus 55 minus m over 27, all the way up to, well, let's see where this one finishes off. This is going to finish at x plus 80 minus m over 27 for the same kind of reason. All of these will have a floor value of n plus 2, but the next one would have a floor value of n plus 3. So let's maybe pick up at the next one. So we'll have the floor of x plus 81 minus m over 27, comma, the floor of x plus 82 minus m over 27, all the way up to our very last term, which is the floor of x plus 80 over 27. And in fact, you can think of that as like 80 plus m minus m over 27. And like I said before, all of these will have floor value of n plus 3. So our next step will be to determine how many elements are in each of these lists. But the way that we've structured these lists, it's pretty easy to count. So the number of guys in this list is exactly 26 minus m. Because notice we start counting 1, 2, all the way up to 26 minus m. And then how many are there in this list? Well, you can see that we're counting from 27 minus m to 53 minus m. And that's exactly 27 elements in that list. Notice that doesn't depend on m. Furthermore, the number of elements in this third list also doesn't depend on m. And in fact, we get 27 elements also in this third list. That just leaves us with this fourth list. And it's pretty easy to see that this fourth list has exactly m elements. And that's not so hard to see just because 80 can be thought of as 80 plus m minus m. That puts everything in this list in the form of something minus m. So let's just reiterate what we've done. We've taken every member from this sum and broken it into four classes. There are 26 minus m elements that have a value of n. There are 27 elements that have a value of n plus 1 and 27 more that have a value of n plus 2. And then there are m elements that have a value of n plus 3. Okay, so let's maybe take that information, bring it to the top, and then we'll finish this off. So let's see where we are so far. We said that x had to be between n plus m over 27 and n plus m plus 1 over 27, where m and n were integers, and m was between 0 and 26. That just came from breaking up the real line into appropriate pieces. Then we argued that our sum, which is what I'm going to call the left-hand side of this over here, can be decomposed into four classes of terms. The first class had a floor of n, and there were 26 minus m of those terms. The second class had a floor of n plus 1, there were 27 terms. The third class had a floor of n plus 2, there were 27 terms. And finally, the last class had a floor of n plus 3, and there were m terms. So I just want to point out real quick, as like a check to make sure this is working out, that we have a total of 80 terms. Because that's what we're supposed to have over here. The first term, second term, 80th term. But we in fact have 80 terms because we have 26 minus m here, 27 here, 27 here, and m here. But if we take 26 minus m plus 27 plus 27 plus m, we get 80. So that's good. Okay, so we want this to be equal to 500. That's our goal. So what we'll do is maybe distribute this out and see what we get from that. Okay, so let's multiply this out. So we'll have 26n minus mn plus 27n plus 27 
plus 27n plus 54, that's 27 times 2, plus mn plus 3m. Like I said, our goal is for that to be equal to 500. So let's maybe combine like terms and simplify things as, as we can. So we can take this minus mn and this plus mn and cancel them out. And then furthermore, we've got 26n, 27n, and 27n. Those all add up to 80n. So that means we've got 80n. And then let's see what else we have. We have 3m, so we'll put that here. And then let's see, maybe we can do this all at once. 27 plus 54 is 81. We can move that over to the 500 and we'll see that we get 419. So this changes into the following equation. We want to solve 80n plus 3m equals 419. And we want to do that where m and n are integers and m is between 0 and 26. So first I want to notice just by the structure of this setup, we in fact need n to be a positive integer. It's impossible to have a negative integer here and then have m take values between 0 and 26 and then still get 419 over here. And now we're just going to play a guessing and checking game until it becomes clear what the solution is if there is one. Okay, so let's notice if we take n equal to 5, that's that's in fact the largest value of n that we could have. So actually over here, we could say that n is actually between zero and five. We can narrow it down even more. But now if n is equal to five, this equation turns into 400 plus 3m equals 419 which means that 3m is equal to 19, but as you can see, there's no solution in that case. So that means it's impossible for n to be equal to five. So let's check what happens if n is equal to four. So if we take n to be equal to four, then we'll have 320 plus 3m equals 419. But then moving the 320 over, we see that we get 3m equals 99. And that's actually exciting because we have a multiple of three on the right hand side. That tells us that m is equal to 33. But as you see, that is also a problem because for our setup, m has to be between zero and 26. So in fact, there is no usable solution in this case either. Then if you go to the next cases, m n is equal to 3, 2, or 1, you'll see that m just gets larger and larger and larger. And so in th those cases, m would also be strictly bigger than 26, which means we wouldn't get a solution. So in the end, after all this work, there is in fact no solution to this equation. And that's a good place to stop.